Hello, today is February 15th, 2023. I will be reading Acts chapter 21, starting at verse 27. And this is titled, Paul Seized in the Temple. When the seven days were almost over, the Jews from Asia, upon seeing him in the temple, began to stir up all the crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, come to our aid. This is the man who preaches to all men everywhere against our people and the law and this place. And besides, he has even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they have previously seen Trophimus, yes, the Ephesian in the city with him. And they supposed, I'm sorry, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was provoked, and the people rushed together, and taking hold of Paul, they dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. While they were seeking to kill him, a report came to the commander of the Roman cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. While they were seeking to kill him, a report came... Oh, I'm sorry. While a report, uh, while they were seeking to kill him, a report came to the, up to the commander of the Roman cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. At once he took along some soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the commander came up and took a hold of him and ordered him to be bound with two chains, and he began asking who he was and what he had done. But among the crowd, some were shouting one thing and some another, and when he could not find out the facts because of the uproar, he ordered them to be brought into the barracks. When he got to the stairs, he was carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob, for the multitude of the people kept following him, shouting, away with him as paul was about to be brought into the barracks he said to the commander may i say something to you and he said do you know greek then you are not the egyptian who some time ago stirred up a revolt and led the four thousand men of the assassins out into the wilderness but paul said i am a jew of tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no insignificant city, and I beg you, allow me to speak to the people. When he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the stairs, mentioned to the people with his hand, and when there was a great hush, he spoke to them in the Hebrew dialect, saying, this is the beginning of Acts 22, <clears throat> and it's great preaching. Brethren and fathers, hear my defense, which I now offer to you. And when they heard that he was addressing them in the Hebrew dialect, they became even more quiet. And he said, I am a Jew born in Tars Tarsus of Cilicia and brought up in the city, educated under Gamaliel, Gamaliel, strictly according to the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, just as you all are today. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and putting both men and women into prisons, and also the high priest and all the council of the elders can testify. From them, I also received letters to the brethren and started off for Damascus in order to bring even those who were there to Jerusalem as prisoners to be punished. But it happened that I was on my way, approaching Damascus about noontime. A very bright light suddenly flashed from heaven all around me. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, who are you, Lord? And he asked me, and he said to me, I'm sorry, I am Jesus the Nazarene whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me saw the light to be sure, but did not understand the voice of the one 
who was speaking to me. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, get up and go on into Damascus, and there you will be told of all that has been appointed to you to do. But since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand of those who were with me and came into Damascus. A certain Ananias, a man who was devout by the standard of the law and well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing near said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very time, I looked at, up at him and he said, the God of our fathers has appointed you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear an utterance from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to all men of what you have seen and heard. Now, why do you delay? Get up, be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. It happened when I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple that I fell into a trance and I saw him saying to me, make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves understand that in one synagogue after another, I used to imprison and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of your witness, Stephen, was being shed, I also was standing by approving and watching out for the coats of those who were slaying him. And he said to me, go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. They listened to him, to this statement. And then they raised their voices and said, away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. And as they were crying out and throwing off their cloaks and tossing dust into the air, the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks, stating that he should be examined by scourging so that he might find out the reason why they were shouting against him that way. But when they stretched him out with thongs, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and told him saying, what are you going to do? Uh, what are you about to do? For this man is a Roman. The commander came to him and said, tell me, are you a Roman? And he said, yes. The commander answered him and said, I acquired this citizenship with a large sum of money. And Paul said, but I was actually born a citizen. Therefore, those who were about to examine him immediately let him go. He found out, uh, uh, let, him, uh, let go of him. And the commander who was afraid when he found out that he was Roman, and because he had put him in chains. But on the next day, wishing to know for certain why he had been accused by the Jews, he released him and ordered the chief priests and all the councils to assemble and brought Paul down and set him before them. Acts chapter 23. Paul, looking intently at the council, said, Brethren, I have lived my life with a perfectly good conscience before God up to this day. The high priest Ananias commanded those standing beside him to strike him in the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God is going to strike you, you whitewashed wall. Do you sit to try me according to the law and in violation of the law order me to be struck? But the bystanders said, do you revile God's high priest? And Paul said, I was not aware, brethren, that he was a high priest. For it is written, you shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. But perceiving that one group were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, I love this part, Paul began crying out to the council, brethren, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. I am on trial for the hope and resurrection of the dead. As he said this, there occurred a 
dis dissension between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. For the Sadducees say that there, that there is no resurrection, nor an angel, nor a spirit, but the Pharisees acknowledge all of it. And there occurred a great uproar, and some of the scribes and the Pharisaic party stood up and began to argue heatedly, saying, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a, seer, a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. And a great dissension was developing. The commander was afraid Paul would be torn to pieces by them and ordered the troops to go down and take him away from them by force and bring him into the barracks. But on the night immediately following, the Lord stood at his side and said, Take courage, for as you have solemnly witnessed to my cause at Jerusalem, so you must witness at Rome now. When it was day, the Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves under an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who formed this plot. They came to the chief priests and the elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a solemn oath to taste nothing until we have killed Paul. Now, therefore, you and the council notify the commander to bring him down to you, as though you were going to determine his cause by a more thorough investigation. And we, for our part, are ready to slay him before he comes near this place. But the son of Paul's sister heard of their ambush, and he came and entered the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions to him and said, Lead this young man to the commander, for he has something to report to him. So he took him and led him to the commander and said, Paul the prisoner called to me and asked me to lead this young man to you since he has something to tell you. The commander took him by the hand and stepping aside began to inquire of him privately, What is what is it that you have to report to me? And he said, the Jews have agreed to ask you to bring, what's up? Can I show you this? Yeah. Sorry. Ooh. Why must you show that to me? Reminder. Sadness. Uh, Acts chapter 23 verse 19 the commander took him by the hand and stepping aside began to inquire of him privately what is that that you have to report to me and he said the jews have agreed to ask you to bring paul down tomorrow to the council as though they were going to inquire somewhat more thoroughly about him so do not listen to them for more than 40 of them are lying in wait for him who have bound themselves under a curse not to eat or drink until they slay him. And now they are ready and waiting for the promise from you. So the commander let the young man go, instructing him, tell no one that you have notified me of these things. And he called to him two of the centurions and said, get 200 soldiers ready by the third hour of the night to proceed to Caesarea with 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen. And they they were also to provide mounts to Paul and bring him safely to Felix, the governor. And he wrote a letter having this form, Claudius Lysias, to the most excellent governor Felix, greetings. When this man was arrested by the Jews and was about to be slain by them, I came up to them, having the troops, and rescued him, having learned that he was Roman, and wanting to ascertain the charge for which they were accusing him, I brought him down to their council and found him to be accused over questions about their law, but under no ac accusation deserving death or imprisonment. When I was informed that there would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, also instructing his accusers to bring charges against him before you. So the soldiers, in accordance with their orders, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. But the next day, leaving the horsemen to go on with him, they returned to the barracks. When they had 
when these had come to Caesarea, they delivered the letter to the governor. They also presented Paul to him. And when he had read it, he asked from what province he was. And when he learned that he was from Sicilia, he said, I will give you a hearing after your accusers arrive also, giving orders from him to be kept in Herod's uh, praetorium. Excuse me. What time is it? Okay. Acts chapter 24. After five days, the high priest Ananias came down with the elders with an attorney named Tertullius, and they brought charges to the governor against Paul. After Paul had been summoned, Tertullius began to accuse him, saying to the governor, Since we have through you attained much peace, and since by your providence reforms are being carried out for this nation, we acknowledge this in every way, and everywhere, most excellent Felix, with all thankfulness. But that I may not weary you any further, I beg you to grant us, by your kindness, a brief hearing. For, for we have found this man a real pest and a fellow who stirs up dissension among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. And he even tried to desecrate the temple. And when we arrested him, and then we arrested him, we wanted to judge him according to our own law. But Lysias, the commander, came along and with much violence took him out of our hands, ordering his accusers to come before you. By examining him yourself concerning all these matters, which you will be able to ascertain, the things of which we accuse him. The Jews also join in the attack, asserting that these things were so. When the governor had nodded for him to speak, Paul responded, knowing that for many years you have been a judge to this nation, I cheerfully make my defense, since you can take note of the fact that no more than 12 days ago I went to Jerusalem to worship. Neither in the temple, nor in the synagogues, nor in the city itself did they find me carrying on a discussion with anyone or causing a riot. Nor can they prove to you the charges of which they are now accuse me. But this I admit to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I do serve the God of our fathers, believing everything that is in accordance with the law and that is written in the prophets having a hope in God, which these men cherish themselves, that there, cert, that there shall certainly be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. In view of this, I also do my best to maintain always a blameless conscience before, before conscience both before God and before men, now, after several years, I came to bring alms to my nation and to present offerings in which they found me occupied in the temple, having been purified without any crowd or uproar. But there were some Jews from Asia who ought to have been present before you to make this accusation, if they should have anything against me, or else let these men tell um, or else let these men themselves tell what misdeed they found when I stood before the council. Other than for this one statement, which I shouted out while standing among them, for the resurrection of the dead, I am on trial before you today. But Felix, having a more exact knowledge about the way, put them off saying, when Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will decide your I will decide your case. Then he gave orders to the centurion for him to be kept in custody and yet have some freedom and not to prevent any of his friends from ministering to him. But some days later, Felix arrived with Drusulia, his wife who was a Jewess, 
and sent for Paul and heard him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. But as he was in discussion, uh, I'm sorry, but as he was discussing righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix became frightened and said, go away from the present, uh, go away for the present, and when I have time, I will summon you. At that same time, too, he was hoping that money would be given to him by Paul. Therefore, he also used to send for him quite often to converse with him. But after two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Porcius Festus, and wishing to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul imprisoned. And I'll stop there, and then tomorrow I'll be able to finish the rest of Acts. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. If you ever want to know how to preach, the book of Acts is laid out with so much, so much goodness. God bless you guys.